Well, hello and welcome to the Suffer Club. My name is Aaron, and this video is going to be a little different this week. This week is a gear review, but before we get into that, let's get into this. Well, hello again. This is a gear review. Uh, I've never done one before, and honestly, the reason why is because gear reviews f slightly frustrate me. Uh, because most of the time, it's about new gear that has come out, and the gear hasn't been tested, field tested, or it's just honestly to try to hit an algorithm or to be popular or put out what people are looking for. And I know that people are looking for gear reviews, but I like a gear review of gear that has been tested and put through brutal conditions and honestly, like, real reasons why to get that gear. Now, there are a ton of gear reviews, and so this is going to be a gear review, a typical gear review. But this is stuff that I've been using for a long time, and I'm going to tell you why I chose the gear that I have on this table. But before we get into that, I got to give you a little history. Uh, I am a videographer and motion graphics artist by trade, and this Suffer Club videos have been kind of a passion project for me. It's been something where I can uh, kind of put some attention to these videos and to my craft and have a little fun with it. When I'm making projects that aren't that fun, but got to pay the bills, I can make these Suffer Club videos that are fun and I enjoy them and I enjoy the adventure. And so... Yeah, it's just been something that I have done over the years, and my jumping on point was a GoPro Hero 4. But very early on, I kind of had these three ideas that I kind of based all of my previous purchases around. One is audio is king. You will listen to a radio, but you will not watch a television with bad audio. Think about that. How many videos have you watched and you stopped watching about halfway through because the the you can't understand what they're saying because the audio is so bad or it's windy or it's distracting and it would be better if they just turned off the audio and just put some background music and you probably would watch it. Um, and so that's kind of uh, an idea that I've had for a very long time and really focusing on these uh, Suffer Club videos over the last little bit. The next thing is a shaky camera will make you sick. Now, when it comes to trails and um, like, you know, brutal conditions, shaky camera is not that bad. But the problem is that a continuous shaky camera will make you sick and you will not want to watch it. There have been many videos that the camera is shaking so bad, I'll just skip and kind of jump through and lose a little bit of the story, but will not have to endure being potentially sick by watching it. And then the third for me is practicality. I have a lot of good camera gear, great camera gear. Uh, I am currently using Blackmagic Cinema 6K cameras. I've got great glass. But those cameras are not practical for um, a lot of these videos on this channel. I would love for me to get where they were and, and you know document in that style. But currently this moment, first person point of view, real scenarios like in the midst of it, these cameras don't work. And so I've tried to figure out how I can carry uh, my gear you know, in these 20 hour runs where I'm frustrated, where my body's hurting and I still don't mind pulling out the camera. There have been a lot of setups uh, that have led me to this, to where I would, to this setup where I would not pull them out, um, you know, uh, into the run because, uh, or into the adventure because it's just frustrating. So I uh, started with a Hero 4, and the Hero 4, which is a GoPro camera, is great audio. Uh, it had a little um, headphone jack that you could adapt to it, and you could put any type of audio into it, and the audio wasn't that bad in itself. But every, he every GoPro after that, up until the 9, has just been 
bad audio, especially the five. And that five is the next camera that I got. And I got the five with the Karma grip and Karma um, gimbal setup. Now, uh, I'm going to show you a photo because this is um, what the Karma Grip has been through. Uh, the photo to the right is when I ran the unofficial Disney Marathon. Yes, I ran 26.2 miles inside of the Magic Kingdom. Uh, that video is on this channel as well. And I carried the Karma Grip and Gimbal. Now, a few things that were great about it is the battery life was great. It had a battery in the grip handle and um, it kept the camera charged. You can see the photo on the left. That is me racing the Winter Short Track Series. I think that was in 2018, where I carried the camera, giving first-person point of view of you know real race scenarios. And as great as that was, um, I've got a gimbal strapped to the front of me, and you know it was frustrating. And one time, the the gimbal uh, was in the front on the chest mount, but it had this extension cable that GoPro made that you put would put the handle or the battery pack in your back. And so about halfway through a race, the battery pack came loose and started bouncing around and then actually fell out. But I've got this long extension cable just bouncing around. So I had to take the battery pack, shove it in my jersey, and I think I finished like four laps with this cable coming up around the camera. It had weird angle because the way the cable was pulled. It was just very frustrating, um, but it did the job like it wasn't shaky the audio was garbage and i'll show you another clip right now of one of the reasons why i got it is because i wanted to do like real life interviews i wanted to do interviews while i was running and here is one of the clips there's a group that runs through here every morning at five o'clock in the morning called the spring street runners they meet at five o'clock every morning so you can hear the audio, the wind noise, and there's just nothing you could do to get that out of Yee! this camera get setup. It, it. And it was so stinking frustrating. And so I'd make these videos, this Hojanaki video, Brian Hojanaki, um, I documented his run and we ran, I think, 13 miles and the wind noise was so bad that I almost didn't release the video because it was just, it was frustrating. And after a while, you're just like, I, no matter the noise cancellation or effects that I did, it really didn't help. And the wind was so bad that it was hard to cut the story out because when you'd be running, you'd talk for a second, take a few breaths, talk again, and the wind would just be inconsistent. And so it was very frustrating. You could not put any adapter. Uh, GoPro made an adapter for a very short season, and then all of a sudden it went off the market. And it was like, at one point in time, this little uh, GoPro audio adapter that worked for the Hero 5 was like pulling $300 for one. And I was like, this dumb. Like, no, I'm not going to do that. So as much as I love that, um, the audio was garbage and it was heavy. And here is another clip. So I'm running with the princess of Uari <laughs> right here. And uh, she was a celebrity at Kelly's Kitchen. So I'm going to let you go past. Okay. Thank you. What was your name? Jessica. Jessica. Good job, Jessica. Thank you, you too. So this was when I ran the Uari 100, and this uh, was 20 hours in the Uari Trail. And my first lap around uh, the first 20-mile loop, I did it in like four hours and 48 minutes, I think is what the time was. And I carried that gimbal up and down Uari's rough trail, and it was brutal. And... As great as the gimbal was, smooth, uh, it made the running smooth and documented great footage, it was so heavy that I did not carry it um, the second loop, and I did not carry it for the f beginning of the first loop. So I, I, you know, I had like 30 miles of the run where I only carried the camera, um, and you know that footage, it documented it, but... 
it wasn't you know, one of the, my key ideas is stable footage you know one the audio is already garbage on the hero 5 and now i'm you know carrying an unstable camera this is going to be frustrating and so i i just you know uh was at a point where i wasn't willing to wait um for the six to get better the seven the eight and or the nine and so I pre-ordered the Osmo Action, and the Osmo Action is what I have on the table. Uh, I love this little camera. It is um, is great. I've used it for, I think, two years now, and I've beat the crap out of it. It's got uh, a bunch of scratches around the bezel. It's got some dings and dents uh, on the body. The glass is still intact. I've dropped this at about 30 miles an hour off the bike, and it's just rolled and tumbled. I have, um, yeah, I've, like I just dropped it right now. Uh, it's got one little scratch. You can see it in the reflection right there on the lens, but you never know it. And one of the things that I loved about it um, was the front-facing little visual. And so um, to be able to see yourself if it's framed, that was really, really good. And I really, really enjoyed it. And so uh, one of the things, one of the real reasons that I got it was because of the audio. And I'm going to play a clip right now so you can kind of hear the difference in the audio. I know this helmet is a lot larger than what I'm used to, but man, it is nice, man. The amount of air. What? Oh, dude, finding even came with a uh, came with a visor as well. I mean, I can't see it on the top of the helmet out of the top of my glasses. So, as you can tell, the audio is drastically different. Drastically different, and. I uh, I fell in love with it automatically. Now, I wanted the audio to be better. And that audio, you can tell, you could hear the gears, the free hub on my bicycle on that. You could hear the guy talking behind me on a bicycle. There were a lot of things that that camera uh, does that is just really, really good. Now, if you turn the camera sideways, it will pick up a little bit of wind noise, but... Um, I wanted to make it better. Remember that interview that I did with Brian Hojanaki and that audio that I showed you? You know, most interviews are going to be me running beside someone, so the camera is going to be facing sideways. So how do I get good audio? Well, um, there was a rumor that a company was making a adapter for the Osmo. It hadn't come onto the market yet, but I looked around and um, the Osmo... So I'll cut to this camera. The Osmo has a USB-C uh, port on the side. Well, USB-C has a boatload of connecting points inside of it. And so this company, uh, I think it's called Sininova, uh, Sinova maybe. Um, here is the little adapter. It is this sweet little uh, USB-C uh, it has a USB-C pass-through on it. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. But it's a USB-C to uh, 3.5 millimeter adapter. And um, it I, you can take and put any type of microphone into it. Uh, at the beginning, I will get to this microphone in a second. But um, going back to the port, a lot of people online have a bunch of different um, reviews on this because some people's port works. This port does not work. It does not pass audio. Uh, does not pass power through, nor does it pass data through, and which is fine for me um, because I unplug it quite often. But it is very easily. It just slides in here, and it fits perfectly on the side. And so now there's no like this is very practical. It's super easy to to um, to use, and now I can leave this in most of the time and not have any problem. Now. I will say that if you leave it in, it will not use the other microphones, and so you'll have no audio, which I have done that uh, on, a, on a bike ride where I was talking into it and realized after the fact that I had the a little adapter in, so I had no audio. Yeah, it's kind of a bummer, but 
you'll only make that mistake one time. And so uh, staying with audio, I have uh, bought a boatload of microphones. Uh, I have uh, quite a few uh, Rode microphones uh, that I use for professional stuff. And as great as they are, they're kind of large and clunky and, you know, uh, practicality is number three on the list. And so I have to have something that's super practical. And so what I landed on was this free world, um, FM eight, I think is what it's, uh, called. Now it is a, um, identical clone of the road mic. I'm not sure about the internals, but the, the infrastructure and the design is very, similar like very very similar and so uh, there's quite a few other brands that make uh, a similar lipstick mic and it comes with this uh cold shoe a little adapter the clip uh, but i wanted to make something even more practical and so uh the this is the little cover that comes with it and as great as it is, I wanted something better, so I bought a little dead cat. Now this dead cat is not built for it. Dead cat essentially just blocks wind. It's not built for it. It's a little uh, thick, which is a uh, little oversized, which is fine, um, because what I did is I made the microphone easily adapt to the side of the camera. Now, before I get into that, because I've got to tell you about my camera, uh, mounting system because remember practicality and the ability to store it away is very important to me and so the next thing i added was this little mini tripod mount and you'll see that there is a little black uh, connector on the top and so this little black connector is um, really the key to the practicality so this is by ulan ZI and slides in and it's a quick uh, disconnect and so you can quickly disconnect and so I have quite a few of these I've got one for my bicycle I've got one for my chest mount and then I've got one for my camera and so as you can see right here I just take and add this and we'll get to this little part in a second but now I can take if I screw it in Got a lot of threads on this rod and screw it in tight and come on got a ton of threads almost there this is, i'm doing this live normally you would see me cut this out but i don't care so bam now i've got a little tripod amount adapter and so when i'm running and i want to set the camera up i can do that or if i'm you know running and i just want the camera to come out real quick uh, I can, you know, make it easy and versatile. But back to the audio. Let's talk about this little thing that's right here on the side. This, <laughs> this little crazy contraption is something that I work through uh, very tirelessly. And it is a DeWalt nut driver that I modified to be the same threads as a normal um, action camera screw. And the reason why I put this on the side is I made this little barrel uh, tightener so you can tighten it with your fingers. And I've also got a wedge uh, cut design in here which presses in, which makes it easier to tighten and easier to loosen. But this is a nut driver uh, quick release. And the reason why I did that is because I made this little microphone adapter slash quick release uh, connector. So you place it in, and then bam, it can hold your microphone. So I'll show you just real quick, real live demo. Somebody's going to see this video, and they're going to make it, and they're going to make a crap ton of money because it's a freaking really smart design. So boom. Yep, easy adapter for the microphone. And let's say I'm interviewing this way, camera's facing that way, microphone facing that way. Let's say I want to talk. All I have to do is do that, and then bam, I can video and talk and document all uh, super easy. So I've worked through a lot of these like ideas and um, things, and you know I've got this like dead cat as well, and so it slides over and it hides this so well in there that it, I mean, it's super 
tight inside of it. I've had this for like, I want to say six months and I've not broke it. It's a hundred percent infill that I 3d printed. And, um, yeah, it's been, it's been great. Like I've had no problems with it. Um, but the next thing that's on the table, uh, has been something that I've recently added to this setup and it's a little heavier, but I wanted a little bit better camera stabilization than what is inside of here. Now, understand that DJI continues to upgrade the firmware and the image stabilization just in camera is really, really good. I shoot most everything at 1080. I don't go up to 4K because it's extra data, you know, and I really don't think that you care, uh, nor do I care. So uh, I bought this off of Indiegogo. Now, I liked the, the gimbal in the um, Karma setup. I liked it a lot. And I was kind of bummed when I got rid of it because it made the footage even better. Like, it was just super smooth, and you could do some crazy stuff with it. And so there's this company, uh, Grav Grip, G-R-A-V-G-R-I-P. None of this is sponsored, by the way. This is just like me real world using it but this little thing um has been really cool they've done some really innovative stuff with it because it has a tensioner in the free wheel in the like moving back and forth and so i'll cut to the top camera and you can see like it it will recenter itself but it has this like easy ease effect because it's got resistance in here um it will actually like when it goes back to center it goes back smooth and you can see it slowly push itself back to the center which is great because now like you know super like shaky footage the camera instead of it moving very drastically it will move and then it will you know it won't move as quick and so it'll have this ease and effect very very cool i bought it off of uh i got it on like one of the kickstarter things and i really enjoyed it um you know, it has its use. Uh, do I use it all the time? No. But, you know, if I'm on the bicycle, uh, like uh, all of the um, rodeo rally footage was used with this. And, you know, it's just super buttery smooth. I can take it off and, you know, disconnect it from the adapter and, you know, just hold it in my hand and it's super smooth. I really enjoyed it. So this is... Uh, a gear review for my camera setup. Um, if you have any questions about it, you're more than welcome to uh, ask me in the comments. I will put all the links. Um, I guess I'm going to just do Amazon. I don't have no affiliation link or anything like that, but if you want to buy it, um, it, the stuff is in there. This is the stuff that I use. I beat the crap out of it. I've broke it. I've rebuilt it. Um, you know, I've, I've tried to put it through the test because I want it to be as you know as cool as it is practical and so uh yeah here's a gear review so i hope you enjoyed it um be sure to like this video that would be cool uh, you can subscribe as well but until next time until next thursday at 5 p.m which will be back to a normal video we'll catch you then adios